right, I'm going to talk to you about multiplying and dividing radicals. And I want you to remember that this is just another operation with radicals. We've talked about adding and subtracting already, and that at times you're still going to have to add and subtract along with multiplying and dividing. So don't just think that because this is a, a different section that, that you can throw out all the other things we've been using. They all still need to be incorporated into what we're talking about here with multiplying and dividing radicals. And so when you're multiplying and dividing radicals, there are actually four different um, tricks or things that you can use to help you find the answer. And the first one is two square roots. And this one's pretty straightforward. Um, the rule is when you're multiplying, and this holds true for any numbers, when you're multiplying, the order doesn't really matter. And what I mean by that is two times three is the same thing as three times two. I can multiply in any order, and I'm still going to get six right here. Well, with radicals, what I can do is I can kind of rewrite this problem a little bit if I needed to to help me um, to help me multiply. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to break it all up. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 2 times square root of 8 times square root of x. Remember, when you're simplifying, square root of 8x is the same thing as the square root of 8 times the square root of x. Um, so then times square root of 4 times square root of x. Well now I can do a little bit of simplifying here. And so I'm going to um, I'm going to rewrite this. Um, I've got my 2 here. And I also know that the square root of 4 is also equal to 2. So I can simplify that. Then I've got my square root of 8. There's not really much I can do with that right now. So I'm going to leave that alone. And then I've got square root of x times square root of x. Well, square root of x times square root of x is equal to x. So I'm going to write that out here just as being an x. Now again, I still want to kind of simplify this some more. So I've got 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. I've got my x here, and then I've got square root of 8. Well, from what we've talked about with simplifying radicals, the square root of 8 can be simplified some more. And so the way we do that is we find the prime factorization. And so 8 is equal to 2 times 4. 2 is prime, so I circle it. 4 is equal to 2 times 2. I circle them. And so, again, I'm going to write all this out. So I end up with 4x. It's my 4x here. And then I'm going to rewrite square root of 8 as 2 times 2 times 2. Because once it's written this way, then I can find those married pairs we've been talking about that we're going to pull out. So I'm going to pull out my pair of 2's right here. And 2 times 2, I can pull that out. So this is 4x times my married pair that's coming out of the house and becoming 1, and then square root of 2. And so again, last time, I'm going to have to do it, simplify this. So 4 times x times 2 is equal to 8x, and then I've got square root of 2. All right, so that was just using the square roots thing, just simplifying it, rewriting it, so that I can combine anything that's the same um, and try to simplify it as much as I can. All right, now we've got distributive property, which we've talked about distributive property before. Since this means square root of 2 times 5 plus square root of 12, I can distribute the square root of 2 to everything that is inside the parentheses. So when I do that, this leaves me with um, square root of 2 times 5. I'm going to write it this way just because that's how we write it. We always put the number before the radicon, the radical symbol, and what's underneath it. Um, so square root of 2 times 5 is 5 square root of 2 plus square root of 2 times square root of 12. Well, when I am multiplying here, I can actually rewrite this um, as square root of 2 times square root of 12. Well, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, I can rewrite that as square root of 24. So that's going to be 5 square root of 2 plus square root of 24. Well, the square root of 24 needs to be simplified, so we're going to do the prime factorization of that, which is 2 times 12. 2 is prime, so we circle it. 12 is equal to 4 times 3. 3 is prime, so we circle it. And 2 is equal to 2 times 2, and they're both prime. So again, I'm going to rewrite everything here. This is 5 square root of 2 plus um, square root of 2 times 2 
times 2 times 3. So again, we're going to look for our married pairs. And so we have 5 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 6. And there is nothing else that we can do here. We have we, There's nothing else that we can do there. Okay? Because it, 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 would, um, what's in the radicand, meaning what's underneath the radical symbol, they have to have the same value before we can combine them. Okay? So that's how that problem is going to simplify out. All right, the next uh, method we can use is what's called FOIL. And FOIL is one of my favorite things. You're going to actually use it a lot in algebra. And it stands for, the F stands for first, the O stands for outer, the I stands for inner, and that doesn't even look like the word inner, sorry, and that L stands for last. I apologize, it, it writes really bad when this thing's flashing and it's recording. All right, so here's what first, outer, inner, last means. You can't just multiply. You have to make sure you're multiplying everything in here. And then as an example, you know if you're doing like 23 times 12. Well, you have to multiply 23 times 2, 2 times 2, and then you got to multiply 3 times 1 and 2 times 1, right? That's how we multiply double digits. Same idea here. We have to make sure that we multiply everything. So by first, it means you're multiplying the first numbers. By outer, it means you're multiplying the outer numbers. By inner, it means you're multiplying the inner numbers. And then by last, it means you're going to multiply the last numbers. All right, and so, um, so let's go ahead and we do that. We've got 4 times 5, which is 20. Plus, and since it's, and we're gonna, we're adding all these together. Unless if it was subtraction, we would, we would be multi or subtracting. So we're gonna use whatever signs in front of the numbers. So since four plus five, four times five is positive, it's gonna be twenty plus. And then outer, I've got four times square root of three. That's a plus right there in front of that square root of three. So this is gonna be plus four. Oops, I wanted to change my colors. Hold on a second, just to keep it consistent with the uh, with the colors that I just used. Sorry. All right, so this is going to be plus um, 4 square root of 13. That was my outer. Now my inner is going to be in green, and that's going to be square root of 3 times 5. So I'm going to rewrite that as 5 square root of 3. And I just saw right here where this isn't written. And then for my last, it's going to be square root of 3 times square root of 3. Well, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Okay? And so now I can look at everything that I've got here. There's my first, my outer, my inner, my last. Now I can start doing some combining. I've got 20 plus 3, which is 23. And then 4 square root of 3 plus 5 square root of 3 is equal to 9 square root of 3. And so this is your answer for that one. And then the last um, strategy that you can use is it's called rationalizing the denominator. And so what that means is I can multiply here if I have square root of 7 over square root of 2, I can multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2 over square root of 2. What is square root of 2 over square root of 2? That's equal to 1. So really I'm just multiplying it by 1 right here. It looks it looks funny because, of course, it's not the number one, but that's essentially what you're doing here. You're not changing the value of it. You're just rewriting it another way. It's kind of like when um, when you were in earlier middle school and you were saying three and a half minus two and three fourths, and you had to borrow, you had to make your common denominator, and you had to borrow from here and add four fourths over here so that this could become 6 fourths. You're not changing the value of the problem here. You just had to rewrite it so that you could solve the problem. That's what you're doing here. By rationalizing the denominator, you're rewriting this so that it can help you cancel some stuff out. Okay? So when we do this, um, by rationalizing the denominator, um, by multiplying by square root of 2 over square root of 2, on the bottom, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is equal to 2. 
So that all cancels out. And then up top, I have square root of 7 times the square root of 2, which is square root of 14. Um, I would like for you to try to pull that out, like look at square root of 14 and see if you can simplify it by dividing by perfect squares. But I'm going to tell you right now that you can't simplify that anymore. So that's just going to be equal to square root of 14 over 2. You can't simplify that anymore. This is as simplified as it's going to get. So let's try um, a few more problems just for some practice. All right, so we've got square root of 2 times square root of 10 plus 8 times square root of 2. So this is going to, you're going to use the distributive property on this one. And so square root of 2 times square root of 10 is square root of 20. Square root of 2 plus, I'm sorry, square root of 2 times 8 times square root of 2, that's going to be square root of 2, let me write that up, square root of 2 times 8 times square root of 2. Well, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is equal to 2. So I have square root of 20 right here plus square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 times this 8 is 16. Now I want to look at the square root of 20 and see if I can simplify it at all. I'm going to do prime factorization, so that's going to be 4 times 5. And 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So that means square root of 20 is going to be equal to 2 square root of 5 plus 16. And this is our answer to this one here. All right, let's try another one. Um, this one we're going to need to use the uh, FOIL method. So we've got our first, so square root of 6 times square root of 2 is square root of 12. Um, we got our outer, which is square root of 6 um, times 7, but see that minus in front of the 7, so it's going to be minus 7 square root of 6. That was our outer. For our inner, we have um, 4 square root of 2, and there's a plus sign in front of the 4, so it's going to be plus 4 square root of 2. And then for our outer, we have 4 times negative 7, so it's going to be minus 28. So now we want to try to simplify whatever we can in here. And um, I know that I cannot simplify square root of 6 anymore, and I know that I can't simplify square root of 2 anymore. So I'm going to pull this out. So square root of 12 um, is equal to 3 times 4. 3 is prime. 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So that means that square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3 oops, minus 7 square root of 6 plus 4 square root of 2 and then minus 28. Alright, so now we're going to simplify this, see if we can clean this up a little bit, and I know that that's <laughs> really messy. Um, so let me see if I can rewrite it so it looks a little bit better. Okay, that's 2 square root of 3 minus 7 times square root of 6 plus 4 square root of 2 minus 28. And because I don't have anything with... Um, anything with the same radicand, there's nothing else that I can do here to simplify this. Okay? Alright, um, now this one we're going to, um, we're going to use the method where we rationalize the denominator, which means we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 5, because essentially it's the same thing as multiplying by 1, but it helps us simplify this down here. And so square root of 5 times square root of 5 is equal to 5. And then square root of 13 times square root of 5. Uh, 13 times 5 is, let's see, 65? Yep. So this is going to be 65 over 5. Square root of 65, I'm sorry, over 5. Well, I need to find the prime factorization of 65 um, so that I can simplify inside this radical. And 65 is equal to 5 times 13, which we just figured out. Um, so this cannot be simplified at all. So this is your answer here on this one because if these are both prime numbers, that means that there's nothing, there's no married pair inside that I can pull out. So this is already a simplified. So there's no perfect squares that go into square root of 65 that help me simplify this anymore. 
okay? And then the last one I'm going to do is square root of 3 times square root of 8, and um, that just means that we are going to multiply together. And so, so square root of 3 times square root of 8 is square root of 24. But again, I want to try to simplify this, and 24 is equal to 4 times 6. 4 is equal to 2 times 2, and they're both prime. 6 is equal to 2 times 3, and they're both prime. So square root of 24, it's awful handwriting, sorry, is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And so I'm going to look for my married pairs and pull them out, and I've got two twos right there. So that means this simplifies to 2 square root of 2 times 3, which is 6. So this is your answer for that one.